the Jet Squelcher is great. If you want to play Sniper, but you suck at sniping. That's why using all those Octo Expansion levels that give you a choice between the Jet and the Charger. Unlike a Charger that can kill one shot, or a Splatling that can kill really fast once its bullets are flying, the Jet Squelcher is a moderately low speed 4 shot kill. It's sort of like a long range end zap, except the end zap is actually good, since it has a lot of mobility. The Jet Squelcher trades mobility and kill power for much longer range to be supportive. But it's also not nearly as good at painting as the Explosures or Splatlings, not nearly as good at killing as the Chargers or Ballpoint, and it doesn't have a ton of mobility, but do you know what really sets the Jet Squelcher apart? No, I'm asking, what sets the Jet Squelcher apart? Because I surely don't know. In my experience, this thing is really good at shooting someone once or twice, but not actually getting the kill on someone. This is probably the easiest weapon for someone to dodge in the entire game. You have long range, but your shots are super easy to avoid at long range. You can potentially get a kill at short range, but most other weapons are way better at short range. If you tell your teammates, hey, don't, don't worry guys, I got this one. I'll play backline, I got it, I'm all over it. And then you select the Jet Squelcher? They're gonna be like, <laughs> Is this some kind of twisted joke? Even when the stars align for once and I'm actually aiming while shooting, this weapon just misses! My aiming radical's black and I'm still missing! I'm doing everything right and I'm still losing! What is this?! Dating. It's a great weapon for huge frauds, so you'd think I'd like it. You look like you're doing something for the whole match, but you're really not doing that much. I just shoot near the enemy the entire time, make them think I might hit them, but don't actually hit them. I ain't trying to hurt them, I'm just trying to send a message. It's honestly kind of a boring weapon to play, and I feel so ineffective using this thing. Whenever I actually do anything, I celebrate like Killer Croc from Lego Batman. Tell destroy Gotham City. I did something! You wanna play a splatling, but you're not smart. You wanna play a charger, but you're playing like a fart. Jet squelcher. Jet squelcher. Use the motherfucking jet squelcher. The Jet Squelcher is a handy dandy support weapon because it's not that great at anything else. It's good at helping out your teammates from behind them, don't take that out of context. If your teammate is shooting at someone, your long range enables you to also shoot at them to help secure that kill. Being the longest range shooter means you outrange all other shooters, all blasters, all rollers, all brushes, all dualies, all sloshers, and all umbrellas. There's only a handful of weapons that do outrange you, but you have more mobility than they do, which gives you more versatility. You also don't have to wait to charge your weapon before shooting at such a long range, you can just shoot. This makes you much less vulnerable when a short range weapon sneaks up close. I mean, you're definitely not good at close range, but you're not completely boned either. On the on the how boned are you rating system, on a scale of men's rights activist to Lou Bega, I, I'd put you at about at a sans. You're like a moderate amount of boned. Being at such a long range means you're not going to be in enemy fire very much, so if you're afraid of dying in the game where you respawn 6 seconds later, you little bit, then this might be the weapon for you. As long as you stay alive in the backfield, you'll be able to give your more aggressive teammates super jump spots for after they respawn. It's also the best regular weapon in Salmon Run, because you can easily hit the Salmon without them hitting you. Being a long, long. The Jet Squelcher is a weapon that requires a lot of patience, good positioning, and good. What the? What the fuck is that word? Let's see. Strategy. Strategy. Nailed it. You gotta stay way the fuck away from everyone else, something we've had plenty of months of practice of, and stand in places where you can take advantage of your reach. Keep foes at the edge of your range so you can shoot them without them shooting you. To be really effective, you're going to have to aim. The prophecy is true. You're a distance demon, just like Byleth. How do you play Byleth in Smash Bros? You keep at a proper distance, then also spam down B. How do you play Byleth in Three Houses? You spam Ruptured Heaven from a distance. 
How do you play Jet Squelcher? Keep them at a distance. If someone approaches you, either shoot them before they reach you, or run away first, then counterattack. You little bit long range expert. You do have less range than most chargers and some of the splatlings, and they can kill you faster, so look out for those. During a match, you can hang out near where statue players typically hang out and pretend like you're one of them. Or, since you do have more versatility than other long rangers, you can mix things up and be more mobile. Shift your position with the shifting of the state of the match. You may be uh, not the best at getting kills at long range, but you can do some chip damage to make it easier for your teammates to finish them off. It's like the Bow Knights in Three Houses. You have to be a real good team player, because you're not going to carry the team with a fucking jet squatcher, I'll tell you that much. You can try to fight up close, I mean, no one's going to expect the frontline jet. And there's a reason for that. You can try to survive, especially if you land all four shots in a row, but the game does get way harder when you're using the jet squatcher in melee range. Now both Jet Squelchers are long range Olympic shot put champions that have special weapons that attack at even longer range. There's the original Jet, and then there's the Jet that everybody actually uses, and the one that you should use too. The Vanilla Jet's kit is, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's definitely a kit. Toxic Mist can help you slow opponents down by making them inhale that dank dank kush, which will make it easier for both you and your teammates to shoot your opponents before they have a chance to dodge or escape, thus helping improve the jet's accuracy. However, Toxic Mist is pretty easy to escape, like hilariously easy to get out of. Plus, your jet shoots farther than you can throw the mist, so it might be better to just shoot them instead of throwing the mist first then shooting them? Tetra missiles can be good for throwing a wrench in the other team's plans by annoying them for a little bit, or as a distraction while your teammates across the map are engaged in combat with them. In theory, you can combine yourself in special by launching missiles and then throwing toxic mist at them for an almost guaranteed missile hit. But again, this can only happen if your missiles target someone who's already pretty close, so... So the custom Robo Jet Squelcher will be the one you're actually going to use, assuming you're not a brainless scarecrow. Burst bombs can help confuse your opponent if they get too close. You can combo it with your main weapon if someone starts to run away, or is hard to hit, since the bursties have a larger hitbox than the jet. If you don't get a direct hit with the burst bombs though, you still need three shots from the jet to get a kill, which is... Uh... Anyways, the main attraction of the custom is of course the Stingray. Spam Stingray, that's all its weapon is known for, they're literally the same shape. You go from attacking someone halfway across the map to someone all the way across the map. Stingray just ends matches if you use it at the end when you're already in the lead. Fun fact, my Stingray is actually magical and that has the amazing ability to not get kills. They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time it, it misses everything, what the fuck? But everyone else's Stingray does not seem to have that special ability, so I say go for it. Now here's some Jet Squelcher tips from the pro I found on WikiHow. Uh, Astro, I, I usually use close range weapons, why am I here? Okay, to be fair, I, I have occasionally used the Jet, and by occasionally I mean one time in that one stream, and I've had a pretty fun time using it. I know it does curve shots, but uh, I, haven't, I haven't really tested out to see how well it curves, I just know that some people have been able to hit me when I hide behind walls with that thing and from what i hear the thing about the jet squashers is it's actually pretty weak like you're not really gonna be killing people with it consistently it's more like you're gonna hit someone once and then you're gonna run away i think something good to have on the jet squelcher is thermal ink because you're gonna hit them and they're gonna run away and then you're gonna see where they're running away to and then maybe maybe you can chase them i don't know i don't know if it's good enough to chase them if you're good enough to chase them but if you're not good enough to chase them i'd say slap on some mpu hold on i'd say Slap on with some MPU, and all of a sudden, you get slightly better aim, and also, it reaches a bit further, so, you know, good, good abilities to put on there, even though you might not think you need them. And, it makes your aim better while you're underground, if you're jumping, your, your aim's all over the place, don't ever jump with this weapon, don't, just don't do it. I also prefer the Toxic Mist and Tenor Missiles version of the Jet Squelcher, because the Toxic Mist version is gonna slow the enemies down, and you can actually kinda maybe hit some of them half the time, if it works. 
hopefully. And with the Tenor Missiles, if you haven't hit them with your Thermal Ink Shots and then them escape with the Tenor Missiles, you get to see which way they're running. Or uh, you can always just, you know, go close range with this thing. I, I, I think it works sometimes, as, as long as the enemy doesn't know you're there. But honestly, if you want to go close range, just use the Clash Blaster instead. Clash Blaster! C -c 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 Clash Blaster! It can hit people from around the walls. People run away from it because they're like, oh my gosh, once this thing hits me, I'm gonna die. And you can just kind of sneak up on people and then once you do, you can say Clash Blaster at their face. C -c 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 Clash Blaster! It's a good weapon, but uh, this isn't a video about the Clash Blaster, is it? This weapon is pretty ink hungry, especially when you're often overshooting to get kills, so it's a main saver can help. Special Charge is good for attacking at even longer range more often. If you're doing a good job of staying alive like a expert strategist, tenacity can help you charge your special faster. For a shirt only ability, Thermal Ink is great for when you only shoot the opponent once, or twice, or thrice, and they're able to get away. You and your team can see them hiding through the walls. Or, Respawn Punisher can also work if you don't want the other team to enjoy the game at all. Main Power Up can extend your range by a tiny bit, which can be helpful if you know you're going to be going up against other jet squelchers. And also, it increases the accuracy while standing on the ground. Oh, Main Power Up, you just make everything better. And that's it. Thanks for watching and thank you to Vasco Games for your tips that I totally listened to before putting them in this video. Everyone go subscribe to him and comment on his videos and tell him I sent you. And once again, thank you to everyone on Twitter who replied with additional tips on Jet Squelcher. Rumor has it, if you follow me on Twitter, your tips can make it into the video too. Now here's some boring gameplay from this boring weapon.